Good afternoon, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we're about to discuss a very important topic of matter. And today, um, I would like to extend my happy in, in, in independent, Independence Day to all Jamaicans. Um, today is August 6th, and Jamaicans are celebrating 62 years of independence, so-called independence, from Great Britain. You know, we're celebrating whatever it is, and we still have to thank God for freedom that we are not and we're not shackled, right? We are still not wearing shackles, even though a lot of times our minds are shackled, but at least our physical bodies are not shackled. And you know, it is voluntary um, that we allow our minds to be shackled and not to be free. But this afternoon, we shall not be looking at independence. Perhaps, well, everything has to do with freedom and independence, I should think, because we have to also extricate our minds from a lot of the cultural habits and the, the cultural traditions that we sometimes attach ourselves to, that we're so tethered to, and we think they are, you know, a part of our daily existence, and that nothing is wrong with them. They're just innocent institutions that we should not give any thought to. Everything that we do and everything that, you know, in which money is involved, and especially when you have loads of money, lots of money involved in that institution, you've got to be concerned about it. And we talk about sports, for example. Now people are celebrating the Olympics, which um, are being held, actually the games are being held in Paris, right? In Paris, um, France, right? At the moment, people are glued to their television sets and some have journeyed there, some have traveled there so that they can experience that sort of grand events because we have the Olympics every four years. Now, we shall be looking at some of the, the corruptions and the obfuscations and a little at the historic foundations of the Olympic Games, because many of us think that the Olympic Games is just sports and sports, you know, are innocent and that we nothing is wrong with sports. But we must understand that sports are connected to big money. And we know that whenever we see big money, uh, big money is always involved in unsavory activities, right? Because the Bible said we cannot serve God and mammon, right? And mammon refers to the material things, money, right? Now money, nothing is wrong with money, right? But it's a love of it. And we know that people, when you have big money, big money people, the ones who control the finances of the financial institutions of the world, they are lovers of money, which the Bible suggests is the source of or the root of all evils in our society. Now, we don't like to think that in sports, we have a lot of corruption, obfuscations, skulldoggeries, you know, even acts of witchcraft and also paganism. We don't think of sports as worship. We don't think of sports as a religion. But if we should look at the history of sports and the sports industry, we'll understand that sports is in fact a religion, right? And it's not a religion that is promoting the worship of the God of heaven, the true creator of heaven and earth. And it's, for, it's time for us to understand that, to read books about it also. I can't educate you about everything in terms of the historic foundation. That would be a lot of series of videos to produce. But we must understand that sports did not just come about innocently by people throwing balls and kicking balls or whatever you do with the ball, <laughs> right? Or dancing or all of these are actually rendering worship, okay, to a particular deity, whether it's Zeus or it is um, Adonai or whatever God that you think you serve. What is happening in our Christian world is that because we have become so indoctrinated by entertainment that people have not really been given thought to these things because we just want to unwind, as it were, and to distress. And, you know, whether we like it or not, these Olympic games and the sports that we watch, the NFLs and the basketball games, people find that they are relaxing. And, but, you know, we are, we can't deny that we are also being corrupted by what we see. Now, we are going to look briefly at the, the um, uh, you know, some articles written here, and let's begin with the USA Today, right? Which is a United States publication, that's the usatoday.com. And they, this was published on 
you know, just a week ago when the Olympics Games started on July 29th, 2024. Now, the question is being asked, the title of the article is, did the Olympic did the Olympics mark the Last Supper, explaining um, Dion Dionysus, all right? So we have Dionysus, I should say, and why Christians are angry. So they're suggesting that it might have mocked the Last Supper, and they're asking, did the Olympics mock the Last Supper? And the media tend to be very, <laughs> you know, hypocritical because they do know that it was probably, it was probably mocking the Lord's Supper. Was the opening ceremony performance a mockery of Christianity, as some are suggesting, or was it a homage to the Greek god Dionysus, or Dionysus, as organizers were claimed? So this is what they're suggesting, and they're asking numerous Christian and Catholic groups, including the French Bishops Conference and Bishop Robert Barron, right, they are suggesting that, yes, it did mock the Lord's Supper. Now, Friday's wild opening ceremony for the Olympic or the Paris Olympics put the spotlight on influential French metal bands, famed athletes bearing their nation's flags, and a triumphant return from the Celine Dion herself. And the parade down the river uh, scene featured plenty of eye-catching moments that sparked online fervor, including one now particularly infamous scene that outraged many Christians who lambasted its resemblance to Leonardo da Vinci's famed Last Supper painting. So this is what conservatives and Christian leaders were quick to condemn the scene as an offensive parody of imagery and symbolism at the center of their faith, despite the insistence of the ceremony organizers that they took inspiration from an ancient pagan festival. Now, the whole matter is that the whole Olympic Games are pagan in origin. So what do we expect, right? It is Christians who want to merge heathenism with biblical understanding of who God is, right? With biblical traditions of Christianity. And because we think that we can merge it, then we are, you know, uh, actually uncomfortable with what we see. But it is not something that is on us authentic is it inauthentic or unauthentic it is <laughs> it is what it is right it is actually an authentic practice or tradition of the olympic games right to glorify as it were and to promote pagan deity because that is how it was founded right the olympic games okay were actually worshiping the these goddesses and goddesses and these gods right of the of sports and they would convene in a grand stadium, and that is how they would celebrate, right, their deity. Yeah, so that is what it is. So yes, the origin of the Olympic Games, of, of course, right, worshipping the goddess or the god of Zeus, right? So that is what that is all about. So why are we so much caught up with behaving as if we're hypocrites when we know that the, the Games, the Olympic Games, are actually pagan in origin. Now we have here um, on in the another paper called Salon, a big pagan celebration, Olympics critiqued for Satanism in its homage to Greek mythology, because that is what it is, right? It is rooted in Greek mythology and Greek religion. But we have found ourselves in modern times thinking that these things are Christian, but they're not. But if you look at our society, you see that we're moving away from this Christian doc doctrine. We're moving away from biblical Christianity and we're moving into paganism, this pagan culture, the embrace of paganism. That is why people spend many hours on their television sets thinking that they're just entertaining themselves when they're actually worshiping. And sometimes, you know, when we think that we're not worshiping is because we're not knowledgeable of what we're doing. We're not knowledgeable of what, you know, how these things came about, how these traditions came about, you know? And we have many of these things in our culture. You know, in, for example, in Jamaica, you have the the Nine Night and all these things rooted in also different religions, you know, uh, African religions. And many of us still practice these things and we think that they are innocent. But the moment that we become aware of these things and that they're rooted in pagan philosophies and religions, we ought not to be a part of these things. And we cannot criticize these people when they are engaged in these activities. We can call them out as Christians, but we cannot think that because we're sitting and watching them and also imbibing our, our children to watch them, 
encouraging them to watch these games, that we are protecting them, and that we ought to educate our children and to educate our loved ones about the religious, you know, roots of sports, particularly the Olympic Games. Now, so over the weekend, the paper continues. Let me show you, let me show you a, a glimpse of, you know, of the what the activities that were done there. And so this is a picture of what they were doing on the celebration of the pagan rituals during the opening of the Olympic Games. Now, if you notice in America also, many of these, you know, um, what you, what we call them like Grammy Awards and so forth, they're now being celebrated, you know, by celebrating pagan gods, right? They, we can see the glorification of our culture in these rites, in these, you know, religious mythologies. So even though our society tends to think that it's moving away from religion, it's not moving away from religion. It's actually, you know, endorsing, promoting pagan religion, which is a religion. But many people say that they're atheists when they are not atheist or they're not atheistic because they're actually worshiping these, um, you know, god gods and goddesses through their participation in music and in sports and a lot of the different types of entertainments that we have in our world at the moment. So you've got to be careful what you watch, what you see, because what you watch or what you see, a lot of times subconsciously, they affect your brain and they, your brainwash. You don't even know that you're brainwashed because you don't understand the psychology behind the sports and what these guys are actually promoting. Now, so this is what, let me go back to the, the article just to show you what the thoughts of, you know, what they were saying about the opening of the Olympic Games in Paris, France. So this 2024 uh, Summer Olympics has only just begun, but not without controversy. The long-awaited Summer Games launched on Friday with an extravagant opening ceremony on the Seine River featuring Paris's most avant-garde fashion, art, politics, and music. However, the lavish opening ceremony that even featured Celine Dion's comeback has been met with conservative and right-wing pushback and criticism in the United States and across Europe. You know, and Celine Dion, you know, has been, you know, she, in recent times, her public image, I think, is much more to be desired. And it's almost like sometimes when I see images of her, you wonder, who she, is she worshipping, right? She looks like somebody from, you know, outer space. Right, somebody who is in another world and is not, you know, earthly as it were. But a lot of these entertainers, um, particularly these very well renowned people, right, they are involved in a lot of satanic activities, right? Because the industry is that which glorifies the devil and not God. Over the weekend, figures like House Speaker Mike Johnson and Elon Musk took to social media to air out their grievances with the claims of anti-Christian sentiment from the Olympics. Conservative Hollywood figures like Candace Cameron Bure and Rob Schneider also joined in on the complaints against Olympics for one particular vignette in the sprawling four-hour spectacle that traversed Paris from the sewers to the Louvre, um, Louvre rather. So all of these are questionable activities that we should be very mindful of, and we should delve into the origins of the Olympic Games, where they came from. We hear that critics from the Catholic Church in France to American politicians have called the tableau sat satanic. And according to Speaker Johnson, the performance was a mockery of the Last Supper and an insult to Christian people around the world. It is not an insult to Christian people in the sense that we know that the Olympic Games are not biblical in orientation. It is an insult because people have made it a part of the culture where we think that these are normal games that our children should watch and we have and they're innocent, right? But when you have industries, institutions in which lots of monies are involved, be aware that they cannot be innocent. And it's not about spreading the word of God and, you know, and um, promoting, you know, uh, innocent values and, you know, values that will uplift our societies, right? It's just about 
you know, uh, glorifying these sports, you know, entertainers, these athletes, and many of our young children see them as gods and goddesses, right? That is why we can't stop talking about the Usain Bolts and the, and the you know, Shelly and Fraser Prices and the Noah Lyles and all of these people, right? We think that they're so important because we have made them important in our lives and they should not be important in our lives because God is the only person who should hold that first place, that first spot in our lives. We should not find ourselves speaking about these people um, a lot. When we are glorifying people like that, it is worshiping them, right? And many times people are so disappointed when, you know, their athlete loses because, you know, and they become so worked up, but sometimes you find that they can't even worship God. Right, because we're so disappointed in what we're watching and we're responding to stimuli. And we've got to really understand that. Now, we have in the ancient Olympics, there is a, I think this is coming from the Met, the ancient Olympics and other athletic games. And let me see, I can share. And this was written in 2000, July 23, on July 23, 2021. Let us see if we can read just a little of the historic, the historic foundation of the sport, right, of the Olympics. The ancient Olympic Games, held every four years at Olympia in honor of the god Zeus, were celebrated for over a millennium and serve as the inspiration for the modern competition. Surviving inscriptions and literary sources list the names of about 800 ancient Olympic champions. The first recorded victor was Cor um, Roybos of Eli, or Elis, or however you pronounce that, who won the, the stadion, that's the foot race in 776 BC by the 6th century BC. Um, we have the Panhellenic Games from Pan all, and Pan also came in from the whole matter of paganism. And uh, Hellenicus were also held at Delphi, um, Nemia and Ithmia and attracted athletes from all over the Greek world. Many local festivals, including the Panathenia in Athens, were modeled on these four games, right? So these we can see where they are actually worshiping the gods and goddesses of the culture, right? The Greek culture, which was a pagan culture, right? We have to understand that it was a pagan culture. Greek athletes looked to their heroic predecessors for inspiration. Milo of Croton, a famed wrestler from antiquity, styled himself after Heracles, even wearing the hero's trademark lion skin to complement his six Olympic wreaths. The um, Athenian boxing champion and Dioxippus was renowned for defeating a fully equipped Macedonian soldier while dressed as a victorious athlete in the nude as his body oiled um, and then but with his body oiled rather crowned with a victory wreath and armed as Heracles. So this is what we are seeing here and this is how they would celebrate their Olympic um, feat and their Olympic championships, right? So this is what, this is where the games are coming from, right? This is not coming from like an innocent origin. The fact of the matter is that we're not studying classics as, you know, we used to, as in schools people used to. So we are not understanding our societies came about. And the fact that, you know, in recent times or modern societies are going right back to paganism. And that is why people are moving away from biblical Christianity to the celebration of culture. And notice in our politics, everything is all about, uh, you know, cultural identity, identity politics, which has to be around the celebration of culture. But it's not the culture that is going to empower and give us a sense of, you know, a true sense that is of who we are as a people. So let me just back now to going to this video that was produced by Maverick or Tracy. And he was questioning the fact that, you know, the Olympics in Jamaica, you know, he's questioning the whole corruption that is involved and the fact that, you know, people are always saying that our athletes are, you know, actually, you know, injured. And he's wondering, where is the transparency? You just say that they are injured. What injury are they suffering from and what caused it? And, you know, we, so a lot of times our athletes go to the Olympic Games and they go there healthy. And we're not suggesting here that they cannot 
be injured at the last minute because you know they're not machines they're human beings but the frequency with these with with these happen he's suggesting that it only happens in the Jamaican camp and um and perhaps in the Olympic Games in the in in the athletic world in track and field and not necessarily in other sports we see a lot of injuries in track and field but some of them might be valid and some of them might not be valid as you know he suggested but we ought not to think that sports is this great institution of transparency and that it is in fact just an innocent games that we're seeing watching because as i suggested before millions of dollars if not billions of dollars are involved in these games and people are betting it is also involved in the whole matter of the aspect of gambling so the fact is that if some big donor has betted on Hussein Bolt or has betted on Noah Lies, you can bet it that that is the person that they want to win and they will do everything to have that person win. So even before sometimes the games are played, the winners are already known. And because that's how they do it. The, and the person with the most money, he's the person that will get what he or she wants. A lot of times the results that we see are not necessarily true results. It is packaged. And how can we think that this is going to be a transparent sports when we see how big money, you know, has played out in things like healthcare and education, in many other things? Why do we think the same people who are, these are the same people who are behind these games. Why do we think that they are going to um, be, you know, much more diplomatic and, you know, and truthful and transparent and authentic? Why do we believe that? Right. That is why you see the people that they, you know, Elon Musk speaking. Do you think that Elon Musk is a Christian when he's talking about the fact that the Christian, that the pagan, the Olympic Games, the opening sessions were involved in paganism? Do you think he cares? I don't think that he cares. Right. I think that it is just his way of, you know, put, um, giving his thoughts about it because he has, I'm sure, invested in that sort of games. Right. Because that's what they do. That's how they make their money on betting and the lottery and all of that stuff. Now, let's listen to Maverick as he speaks about what is happening in the Jamaican arena. We can have this piece one more time. There's some most credible opinion. Fear of fearless analysis. We still have the Olympic Games in Paris. And you know what I say? Not for the time when the Maverick come on the channel and rant. You know what I say? All of the time they rant, they're genuine rant, you know. I don't know, cosmetic, I don't put down around to them. Issues of concern, genuine concern from my heart, them issues are the issues that we normally run over. The issue of the coaches, athletes, sometimes, as we said, the physiotherapists, the team manager them, lying to the Jamaican public, specifically about the injury status of the athletes. is a genuine concern for the man. So I rant the other day when Sharika pulled out of the tool and me get some responses. Some people leave me off the ear and send me a couple of theories as to why this strange phenomenon exists uniquely in a Jamaican sport. As we say, I don't observe it in American sprinting. I don't observe it in American NFL. I don't observe it in a NBA. I don't observe it in a, in a soccer. We don't observe it in an EPL football. We don't observe it nowhere else but in a Jamaican track camp. So a couple of people reach out to me and send me some theories. They're going to share the theory with you know, and tell me what to think. First one came to me was that it's about not giving away a psychological advantage to your, to your opponents. So when you, when you, when you, you know, when you're forthright with your injury status, you have if you're hurt, you're not 100%. You know, it, it gives your, 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 your rivals a psychological advantage. He says, yeah, yeah I'm going to beat him, lame. All right, we can beat him, then give him a psychological advantage. That's one of the theory. But I don't think that one is true. I still think of it. Because, again, if you're injured, you're injured. You won't be able to compete at your best. So, psychological advantage or not you will be at a disadvantage. So we don't get that one. All right, here's the other one now. 
How many kind of have some suspicions about what somebody just outlining to me? Them say, these elite athletes, especially the elite athletes, the sponsorship contracts for them say, contingent in a lot of those contracts are bonuses that the athletes receive when they make like the Olympic team or the world championships team. So them get big bonuses when they make those teams. Understand them because you know the gear company them I will get Olympic level or world championship level exposure now for them brand. So they have the athletes them big bonuses just to make their teams there. So when athletes don't make the Olympic team or don't make the world championships, they actually lose a whole power. Oh. They talk at the elite level now. So therefore the incentive to lie now comes in. What most of the athletes do? Because of that reality, you know, is that they they try their very best, even when they have injuries all season. They pull out all the stops, even run injured, even from the injury, they make the team. Making the team is of the essence, you know, because there's a financial bonus awarded to them to make the team. Now, even after they make the team, know it fully well, that they're not a hundred percent team, and they won't be able to give it their all at the major championships, you know. For me, understand that they at least do know. After making the team, which was the priority, them know say them lame, you know. But what them normally do, they come at the major championships now. They put on a pretense now that them get injured in the championships because remember now it's all about making the team, you know. So you, you keep that that window alive as, as as long as possible that you'll be representing the sponsorship brand at the big Olympic Games or the big World Championships. So a lot of times they know they believe. So that is why in an in early season, you see a lot of them are misbeats and them now compete because they are carrying injuries. And they now come out and say up front, well, I'm suffering from a left come strings, chain, and they now come out come to them something. You know, so this is the whole problem with our world, right? We're living in a corrupt world. And it is very interesting that people would think that sports is not corrupt and that this is about entertainment and that it would not involve the politics, the, the, the world of corrupt politics that we see in our political realm or in the economic realm. But this is also the same guys who are running the show, the same elites, the same oligarchs who run these sports events, and they're making money. And as he's suggesting here, there are ways in which, you know, bribery is done and, you know, obfuscations and skullduggeries that we are not aware of. And they have their ploys and their mechanisms through which they, made, they make money. And that is the ultimate goal, to make money and to deceive. And, you know, the fact of the matter is that this is a game not in, you know, it's not a transparent sort of industry. And people are suggesting that where is God in the Olympic Games and what have they done to our Jamaican team? God is not in the Olympic Games. God is not in sports, by the way, because sports has its origins in paganism, in pagan religions, and God does not share his throne with any false gods. That's what we have to understand. So we can pray until thy kingdom come. All of these games are just based on sheer luck, right? They are based on sheer luck. It's not about God's blessings on them because God cannot share, as I'm suggesting here, his throne with any other gods, right? The gods of this world, right? That is what we're seeing in the Olympic Games, and that is what it is. But let's continue with what he's saying. So, the, so it is all personal and financial. It is all down to personal financial gains. Why these athletes and their coaches and their representatives consistently lie to the Jamaican public and to the world. Now, does this... Let me see if I can share the screen back with you. I thought that I did not, I, you know, went out of it, so I have to share it. Yes, let me come to you. Sorry about that. Thank you any less detrimental to the chances of a Jamaican team to perform to its optimum. No. What this explanation shows is that these athletes and their people 
are actually selfish. And it's all about them. Yeah. Because they know very well that they are not a 100% fit and they won't be able to give it their all. But because they want to scrape up the piece of bonus food, as per their culture, they pull out all the stops. Pop all the muscle again, you know. We make the team. Going into the, team, the, 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 the championships, doing fully well. That some of them now again, they pop out. We don't think we feel any less angry about the situation. Because what it highlights and confirms that this is all about selfish gains. This is not necessarily about giving the country the best chance of winning as much medals as possible. Now, what I'm emerging them when we are with about it, I'm said to Mr. Maverick, put yourself in an at least position. Do you see the level of investment, the investment of energy into this what you call sports, right? So this is beyond entertainment, right? This is giving your country some sort of glory on the world stage. And we have not grown up because we have seen where 2008, where Jamaicans performed very well in 2008 um, in Beijing, the Beijing Olympics, you know, getting a lot of medals there. And what did it do for country? Uh, just, uh, just about, you know, you're saying both, of course, won his thing and the other athletes, the other star athletes, you know, they got a lot of money. Um, but it really didn't do much for country, right? It didn't do much for Jamaica. And we have not yet learned our lessons from, from that. We think that the Olympics is going to give us something and it's going to make Jamaica and big on the world stage when it's not going to make us big on the world stage, right? It might attract a few more tourists, right? And we might get a little bit more um, flack. No, we're not flack, but we would get a, more, a little more recognition, I should say, in the world, right? When we travel the world, people might know Jamaica more. It spreads our flags across nations, but it doesn't really add anything to us. We have to build our country. If we were to expand and to exert the amount of energies that we put into sports, into building our economy, as Oral Trace is doing, I think that, well, this is his field and I'm not knocking him, but I'm saying that too many of us find ourselves putting and expanding, exerting so much effort into sports that we are not exerting and expanding the same amount of energy into building our economy, into building our nation. And that is why we have invested so much in these athletes when these people are just enjoying themselves and they're making money. They're making money. They're enjoying themselves and making money. It's These are selfish gains. It has nothing to do with the building of communities. Right? It's just the glorification of these individual athletes and their donors. Right? And also ensuring that their brands are actually, you know, promoted right and secured so why are we spending so much time and effort investing our intellect into the sort of nonsensical games you know and i i say more power to these athletes and i congratulate them but i'm not going to put my energy into these games and we understand those of us who are christians that these games are not rooted in wholesome values right <laughs> they're not right as i suggested that they're coming from pagan origins it's a religion whether we like it or not it's a religion and that is why he's so passionate about what he is talking. He's so invested, apart from the fact that, it, yes, it is in his field, but he's so passionate. He's investing a lot of energy into wondering why is this not so? Why are we not expending all of that stuff in corruption and crime and violence and all of that stuff? We'll never do that, right? Because we can only invest our time in these transitory athletes who will come and go, right? Put yourself in you know, the coach's position. Put yourself in an agent position. What would you do? Say, all right. You want me to know? Me not in a position. So me not talk from freedom perspective. Me not talk from a Jamaican track fan. Emotionally invested in a seeing my best team go out the the track. Yeah, is not stupid. He's not speaking from you know from the brand you know, the people who control that brand, right? The owners of these brands. He's speaking from a Jamaican perspective. What do we own? Jamaica owns nothing, 
right? These are slaves. These athletes are slaves to the, the donor class, right? And they have to do, or, you know, unless they're going to move away, they have to do what their brand, you know, owner tells them to do, right? We are the ones who regard them because they have, you know, some money that we think are lots of money, but it's not a lot of money in comparison to what the owners of these brands have. Mm -hmm. And they have to do a lot of things and secretive, you know, um, deals that many of us perhaps would not have a bit engaged ourselves in. Some of them are also involved in secret societies. And they have to perform certain rites and all of these rituals and, and stuff like that. And these are people to whom we, we look up. You know, we think that these people are, you know, our role models. And we have made them into idols because, as again, idols are a part of religion. And that's why the Bible said, thou shalt not have any other gods. Right? Because these are idols that we have made in our lives. Well, I represent Jamaica. Yeah? The, all of these poor Jamaicans who are strong to make ends meet. But when it comes to Olympic and World Championship time, mm -hmm. the one that we used to get up in our country square mm -hmm. with them pot and pot cover and them pot. Dancing. Regularly, ordinary Jamaicans mm -hmm. invest mm -hmm. emotionally <laughs> in a sea of big schemes on the track. The slaves, huh? Their perspective is that whether you get to an extra million or two million US, or even 500,000 US as a bonus to make the team. For them investment, it's the same. Jamaica and Panama. Yeah, but who cares about some slaves in Jamaica who have nothing, who owe nothing? Do you think the brand deal, do you think, you know, Nike or, you know, the one that was Usain Bolt's uh, sponsor, do you think they care about some pot licking people in Jamaica in halfway tree? What world is this guy living in? Who cares about what Jamaicans think, right? This is a money-making industry. And these athletes are just being used to promote and to um, a brand, a certain brand that these, you know, elites, these oligarchs are trying to promote and to make them wealthier. And of course, the athletes get some of the crumbs and they do get, a, you know, a big portion of the crumbs, you know, well, in, 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 in comparison to what we have, the monies that we have in our bank accounts, they, they get a big portion of the crumbs. Right. But they have to do things that perhaps we would not want to do. Any, you know, Christ like person would want to do. And that is why competitive sports is not as healthy. It's not a healthy industry as many people believe, because people have to be involved in things that you would not be involved in. It's just business as usual. Just like people in the financial realm, and they have to be involved in things that they perhaps would not be involved in. On a regular basis, on a regular, you know, uh, in a regular situation, right? The same thing in the sports industry. So nobody cares about what Jamaicans think or do not think because they're not running the show. In a poor society like Jamaica, what? Who cares about what they think? Would you? Are we at them, please? So make the athlete them and the agent them and the manager them and the coach them come represent for them perspective. They should be honest about it then. But they're not going to be honest about it. Is the IMF honest about what it's doing? Right? Is the Jamaican Minister of Finance, Dr. Nigel Clark, and the Prime Minister, Andrew Polis, are they honest about everything that they're doing? No. Because they know that they're representing their financial masters. And they cannot disclose to you everything that is happening behind the scenes because if you do, if the, we did know what was happening behind the scenes then we would have a revolution in the same way if they should reveal unpack what is happening behind the scenes in these negotiations in these contracts nobody would want to support because they would see that's all a lie they would understand that all that is they're seeing and watching is artificial it's nothing is really true most of it is not true it's just you know artificial and made for you to enjoy yourself for a, mo a moment and you think that that person won look at what happened with Noah, Noah, Noah Lyles and the controversy surrounding him and the Jamaican guy who many people think won the game 
And then all of a sudden, oh, it's not the foot. When the foot touches it is a torso and all of that nonsense. That is the rules of the sports. When did that become the rule of the sport? We thought that if you had your head on the line or your feet or whatever, that would have made you the winner. But now suddenly there is some sort of rule that was on the books that people didn't proper well. I don't know how many persons, there are people who claim that that is a rule and that if you're clavicle or you whatever and all of the explanations I'm hearing, because these sports are not transparent, right? And that's what we have to understand. It's just made to, just like any other processed food, you love them, but they're not healthy for your bodies, right? And many of the processed food that you put into your bodies, a lot of lies are behind them. They tell us that they're nutritious and they have all these wonderful ingredients when it's just a bunch of lies, right? So that's why sports is not as healthy as we think. It is not healthy for, you know, if you want to grow up into a, um, you know, mentally um, healthy person. <laughs> right and somebody who is wholesome and sane right because these guys who control the sports industry are the same billionaires that control the finances and the economics of the world and they're not about telling you the truth are they people are come out or tell you why they keep lying to us consistently and why this cloud of secrecy about the injury status of our elite athletes Going, especially going into major championships. <laughs> so, I'm not sure <laughs> you feel any better about the situation. No, I should do. Still feel deceived. Still feel let down. Mm -hmm. Still feel like people are being less than forthright with us. Mm -hmm. No, there is. Right? Yeah. Well, that is what the sports industry about any money, you know, the financial institutions are about skullduggery and deceptions, right? and obfuscations. So nothing is new under the sun, right? He's the one who has expended. If he goes and he does a little bit more research about sports, he would understand that sports, you know, has always been a corrupt industry, particularly as it is now a multi-billion dollar industry because our people nowadays are brainless and they, in order to, you know, make up for the lack of ability to think, they have to resort to sports and they think it's some form of entertainment and it's some form of making you rounded it has nothing to do with anything of that. And nobody's suggesting that you should not, you can't enjoy a sport and you can't exercise by doing that sport, by participating in that sport. But these competitive sports that have billions of dollars linked to them, don't think that they are in any way in just innocent games that you're watching on your television, right? Because a lot of times, as I'm suggesting, these games are already pre-made and they know who is going to win and they know how the ultimate end game will be. And there's a lot of acting, deception, and obfuscations in these games, right? So let us grow up and begin to understand that the world is not what we think it is. And let's not invest our time and effort and money into, you know, um, into these athletes, right? Let us do that and invest our time, our monies, and our energies into spreading God's word, all right? That's the best thing I think we can do. But in doing this and in thinking that men are reliable and they are transparent and they're authentic, I think that we are fooling ourselves. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you would like and you'll share and you subscribe. I look forward to uploading another video, but make, make sure that you share the video and you comment on the video so that the algorithms can share this video with as many people as possible. Thank you so much. All the best to you. See you then. Bye.